let's explore what we can do with this. So we're going to go to MATLAB, and we're going to start with polynomials. So we're going to take three points, and just as a quick sketch, those three points are negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2. All right. So we got three points. What degree of polynomial will fit through this? Let's work our way up. Uh, they're not all in a line horizontally, so a constant function won't work. Will a linear function go through all three of those? Is there any linear function that will go through all three? No. Is there a quadratic that might go through all three? Yes or no? Yeah. So it's got three points. It's not too hard to imagine some parabola doing that. Seems reasonable. Let's see if we can track that polynomial down. So we are going to go into MATLAB. And W51 already has these data points in them. Notice it's all the x's in one vector, then all the y's in another vector. It's not three variables with points. It's two vectors, x and y, with the coordinates in them. And what we're going to look up right now is the polyfit function, which will, oh my god, fit a polynomial to our data. All right. Now, this is a little more generic than we need. At the beginning, I made this big fuss about this being interpolation and not fitting. But we'll see that we can actually take advantage of the polynomial fit to do the job. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Polyfit returns the coefficients for a polynomial of degree n that is the best fit to the data in y. The coefficients we get back are in descending power. So we've actually seen this before. When we did the roots of a polynomial, we had to present the coefficients in highest to lowest order. MATLAB tries to be consistent about these common patterns. So here, it'll be coefficients from high order to low order. Now, the nice thing about fitting polynomials is that if we pick a degree that's high enough, we're going to be able to get an exact fit through the graph. So what we're going to do is fit the data to x and y, and we're going to fit a quadratic, so degree 2, polynomial to that. And we're going to run. All right. And we get three numbers back. Yay. Now what those three numbers are, are, are polynomials, sort of-ish. What does the 1.5 represent? If I've got a quadratic, the 1.5 represents sweat. Yeah, go ahead. The A coefficient, which, which of the constant linear quadratic? Quadratic, right. So we just said the highest order to lowest order. So this is quadratic, linear, constant. Okay. So that's it. It did a fit for us. Now, I would feel a whole lot better if we could plot that. So we're going to use another command called polyval, which we'll also look up the help for. And a lot of the fitting and interpolation functions come in these pairs, a fitting and then an evaluation. So what this does is, let's take a look at the top here. Up at the top, here's how we're going to use it. We're going to give it a polynomial. Oh, wait, we don't give it a polynomial. We give it the coefficients of a polynomial. So that 1.5, 0 is going to be our p. And then we're going to give it some more x values. And I'll show how this plays itself out here. So, And what it returns is the value of the polynomial evaluated at the x values. So let's see how this works. All right, MATLAB, close. So we're going to call this fitting thing p, because it's the polynomial, or at least the coefficients of the polynomial. p equals that. And then y2 is going to equal polyval of that polynomial. Uh, let's try the same x-coordinates to see what happens. And then we're going to plot x against y2. And why not? We'll do a hold on. And we're going to plot our x versus y as dots that are red, just for fun. So a couple new lines of syntax, the polyfit and the polyval. The rest of it's just generic plotting. And we'll see how it works out. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Bleh. <laughs> Let me just make the red dots a little bigger so we can see them. But I'm a little unhappy with what we just got there for other reasons. So one, you can boost the marker size by changing the marker size option here, like 20. There. 
There we go. All right. What is not good about this quadratic function that I'm graphing? <laughs> it's not smooth. That is not a parabola. If you drew that in your grade 7 test about parabolas, you'd get a big X through it. Uh, but where's the problem coming in? Because I, I, honestly, we fit a polynomial. We know the polynomial would be 1.5x squared plus 0.5x plus 0. That's right, but we're not using it correctly. Any ideas to what's going on there? Yeah. It, absolutely. And this is the most common error, so I want to highlight this. Look at what we evaluated at. We evaluated our polynomial, which was fantastic, at the coordinates in x. Exactly how many coordinates are in x altogether? Three, exactly. Look what MATLAB did for us. It plotted the value at three points and said, well, I'm not going to assume you want to do something smooth in between. It assumes it's going to draw straight lines. So this is our problem with plotting, not MATLAB's plotting with problem with calculation. So if we want to plot a graph, maybe 100 points would be a lot more reasonable. So that's what we have to do. We're going to need two, de two sets of data. And if you look at the syntax in MATLAB, frequently they, what they do is this. They use x for the raw data, and then they, they use a double x for the uh, sample data that we're going to use more often. So let's go from like minus 1.2 to 1.2 or something like that. And then we have to make sure we use those x's when we do our evaluation. So let me highlight those two lines there. So now what are we going to do? We have x and y, but those are three dots, three points in space. We need to plot a smooth looking graph. It won't be perfectly smooth because we're only going to sample it, but at least more smooth than those three dots connected. So we're going to make a linearly spaced set of x values. We're going to call it xx to distinguish it from our raw data, which was x. Then we're going to calculate the values of this polynomial at that list, long list now, of xx values and plot those instead. So we also have to change the plot command so it plots xx, which went into y2. We have to plot both of those together. And now it's going to look fantastic. That is what we actually found, a quadratic curve that scoops through the three points perfectly. OK. So the reason we're getting it through, of course, is because we fit a quadratic. If we fit a linear, it would fit it and try to get it close. But we can actually go exactly through and if we use a quadratic with three points. So the fit is exactly the same as an interpolant because we picked a high enough degree here. All right. Any difficulties, questions, or comments about this, especially this fit and this vowel and the two x's? Because that's the single most troublesome spot for students. OK. All right. Show of hands, this is sort of OK, I think, mostly. OK. OK. Then we're apparently done interpolation, right? Because we can interpolate anything with a polynomial. We just have to ramp up the degree. Let's actually try that with uh, W5, 2 here. So we're going to open up. Actually, I'm going to copy and paste everything down from here to down. And then I'm going to open up 5, 2, because we can basically recycle everything we had there. That's good. We want to fit a polynomial. Let's, ah, let's just try running it and see what happens. Oh, I want to put a close all at the top, though. That closes the graphics window, so our new graph pops right up in front of us. There we go. Uh, ah, crud. What should we change? This graph isn't what we want yet. A couple, any, there's about two or three things we need to change. What do we need to change? The degree, absolutely. Uh, so we want to go through the data points. There are one, two, three, four, five, six data points. So what degree of polynomial will we need all together? <laughs> that was not all together. There was one right answer. We had three points, and then we used degree two. So if we have six points, we need degree five. That's it. So let's try that, five. And we'll run that. Ah, lovely, going through the points. We just need to extend now the sampling points out to about 5-ish. Like, so let's go out to about 5.2 or something. There. 
In fact, we're actually interpolating a little, extrapolating a little far there. But we can tune this up until we get a graph that seems pretty reasonable. Right? So, yay, polynomials. <laughs> this is pretty good. We've got a nice smooth interpolant. There's no cusp, there's no misbehaving stuff. So polynomials are looking pretty good so far. Let's go back to the code just to see. The only changes there were changing the degree and changing the span over where we are graphing. Otherwise, everything else is the same idea. Any issues with that? OK. Next step. All right. Let's, we're talking about interpolation, not extra, not extra. So intra means fit between the points. Extrapolation means going beyond your data. Let's just see what happens for the sake of argument, though, when we go out to x equals 10. So let's just plot a little bit further out here and see what we get. We do see something a little odd looking, I would say. You know, the curve looks like it's going this way, but then if I keep the polynomial going, it's going to bend up and start going off to infinity, right? Well, that's what polynomials do, right? Polynomials are powers of x, so the bigger x gets, eventually it's going to shoot off to infinity or shoot down towards negative infinity. And it's going to do that on both sides. So that's something we know is going to happen. Now, that's, that's OK. If we're happy with this region here, and that's pretty reasonable, we shouldn't be going beyond our data anyway, at least not too far, maybe we can live with that. But we're going to see there's a downside consequence to this property of polynomials that we'll see in our next example. All right. I'm going to add two more data points to the end. And all they are are a continuation of this curve. So, you know, if I was sketching this by hand, it would have an asymptote here, like flatten right out. Right? That is the, if I had no other idea what was going on, that's what my brain would draw to connect those dots. Now let's see what polynomials do to that wonderful vision. We're going to tack two points on the end of our graph. They are at 10 and 20 in x. And the two new y values are 2 and 2. And that's good. And we're going to want to interpolate out to 20 now, because that's where our data goes. So we had the nice arch before. Now we're just tacking two more data points out in the end, and we're seeing what polynomials do for us. And wow. <laughs> that's what polynomials do for us. Look at the red dots. That's your data. <laughs> la, 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 I'm going along. I sort of surge a little bit. That's OK, maybe. And then all of a sudden, boom, I drop out and I come back up. Why? What, what is, what is, why? Well, here's the problem. Sorry, unless you have an answer. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, change the degree. That's a good point. Uh, actually, I'm still interpolating, surprisingly. But if I change my degree, I bet you not a lot's going to happen. Uh, where's degree here? Seven. Yeah. Oh, great. It goes the other way now. <laughs> so it's not the degree. There is a problem with the degree. You're right. It wasn't actually interpolating. It was just getting close. Uh, but even still, fixing it is still like just wrong. And here's where we get to our, why do I not like this interpolant? It is. It is a perfectly good interpolant. It goes through the data points, and it is smooth. But it's exactly the problem. I tried to highlight earlier with the, what if I draw things like a crazy person, like this. This is a true interpolant, but nobody wants it. You can't sell it. No one's paying money for that. They want that, which is the natural, and we all know natural when we see it, and we surely know unnatural when we see it. But it's not, what we're getting now is the unnatural version. Even though it's a nice fit. This is a polynomial. It's a nice smooth curve. But it does something wonky because of what, the way polynomials work. And if you think of how polynomials work, we're dealing with a degree, uh, what do we say, 7, x to the 7. If you imagine 20 to the power 7, so that's already over 10 million. And imagine going to 21 to the power of 7, that's already over 10 million plus a bunch. What is happening here is that our polynomial just cannot behave itself when it gets to high degrees. It can't do flat because. It has to go either down sharply or up sharply after the last data point. When you have a big degree polynomial, that's what they do. They go off to infinity. And the bigger the degree, the faster they go off to infinity. 
And as soon as you say it needs to go, in our case, down, it can't do that and stay smooth without having a corresponding up on the other side. And that's why we get this sort of shape here. On the other side, it actually is going down already, so it doesn't need to do awful things to itself. But this bouncing syndrome, you can't avoid it if you're going to use a single big polynomial because of what polyno big degree polynomials do this shooting off to infinity really fast. And to be smooth and do that, you've got to sort of bounce around before you settle down. There's no way to avoid it. There's a lovely name for this, and I kid you not, it is actually called the polynomial wiggle. <laughs> Dance craze back in the 50s, the polynomial wiggle. Uh, because it's sort of, it's, it's wiggling in between the data points for no good reason. It's just kind of bouncing around. We don't know what, well, we know why, but it's not what we want. So here we hit a barrier. When we look at our early polynomial fits, they were lovely. Like fitting through three points, I got a lovely curve, great. Even fifth degree, it was, okay, it was pretty good. But there's going to be times like this one here where what I imagine, which is the smooth line just connecting those dots, is not what we're going to get out of a polynomial. That's a problem. So polynomials are almost right, but not quite good enough. 